forever. Dog. And now I can feel him step out into the hall. And he looks in our direction. And he realizes the kid's getting me. He, that I'm picking up on his presence and what he's thinking. And so he turns to me and he says, Tell these filthy squatters to get out of my house. He was a flapper in a past life. He's a comedian in this life. He's got a podcast about it. Everything he loves. Magic, magic, psychic, psychic, mediums, astrology. Hi, I'm Mike Kelton, and you're listening to... I'm calling because I wanted to talk about the like weird stuff that's been happening to me. I think the light flickering is so dumb. Lights flicker. That's something that happens. But not all the time. Like to it's a specific not happening person. All the time. It's not happening. You're just noticing it. So you guys just heard me and my boyfriend Andrew having a little argument. Now we're having this argument because ever since we started this podcast, I feel like weird supernatural things have been happening to me. One, I've been having a lot of trouble sleeping. I have been my entire life a very good sleeper. I can fall asleep absolutely anywhere. But since starting this podcast, I can't fall asleep because my mind is racing and I'm laying in bed fully awake with so many thoughts running through my head and I am genuinely imagining that there are like a bunch of spirits just over my body being like, yo, Mike, help us connect with our friends or something like that. And I know you're like, oh, Mike, just stop imagining that insanity. You're right. I should, but I literally can't turn it off. Two, there are lights flickering pretty much everywhere I go. Okay. I am a walking conduit for energy. I'm walking into my bathroom before I go to bed to brush my teeth. And the lights are flickering. I'm going to Barry's boot camp on an 820 workout class, and the light above my treadmill is flickering. Yes, there are lights above every treadmill because it's an institution that makes you look sexy as you're working out, and it's very good, let me tell you. Third thing, I went to my sister-in-law's birthday dinner at Catch in Meatpacking, amazing place you have to go and make sure someone else pays. And in the middle of this dinner, the lights start flickering. Like all of the lights in the dining room start flickering. Do you remember when we were at Catch for Lauren's birthday and the lights were flickering? That was happening. They that were flickering a lot. That is, that's the only thing that I might give you was there. And I guess the last thing is I charge my phone next to where I sleep on a nightstand. And my phone has been lighting up in the middle of the night. And it's really bright, so it wakes me up. And it lights up and there's no text message coming in. There's no notification, like literally no one's DMing me and my phone is lighting up. And so I thought it was like a charger. It's not my charger. My charger works absolutely fine. It's just lighting up. The story you tell about like how your phone like <laughs> lit up in the middle of the night. Mine does that too. It no, just, like, it doesn't. Loses power. Yes, it does. You just don't, you sleep through the night always. You just don't notice shit like that. So you think the phone thing is like, is not considered weird? I would not put that in the weird category. I would put that in, oh, the char- the wireless charger that I have had a quick blip and then it started charging again. I don't, I just don't think it has a quick blip because it's Samsung. <sighs> oh, geez. So I feel like something or someone is trying to communicate with me. And I think now I know why this stuff is happening. I think I know why the lights are flickering. I think I know why I can't sleep and why my fucking phone is lighting up. And it all came together when editing this episode. Today, we're talking about psychics, honey. Not Jean Grey, although we love Jean Grey. We're talking about real psychics that make their living 
by talking to spirits and telling you what's going to happen in your future by reading your tarot cards. And in New York, there are so many psychics, literally on like every block. So I wanted to make sure I was chatting with like a real psychic. And the only way you do this is you get a good referral. This is me chatting in the studio with my good friend, John. Hi, my. Hi, John. Thank you for being here. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm very, very excited. Yeah. John is magic. Like, I need you guys to know that, like, kind of like, just like I'm magic, John is also magic. Like, <laughs> like we're like magical gay beings here on Earth. In the highest form. In the highest form. We're vibrating. So as like you a- can tell, John and I are both fun, and we love to kiki, and we're both gay men, and we love it. But uh, the reason I had John on to this podcast is because John is literally a psychic connoisseur. So I have been to six psychics in my life some people like to gamble i always say and for me my fun you know i'm like i spin the roulette by just going to a psychic you know you throw money at something you have a good time <laughs> to me that's gambling and that's to me is going to a psychic like, it's like a thrill yeah for gambling me, like, with your spirit <laughs> yeah it's yeah. like ooh, like i can't wait to like see what someone has to tell me about the great unknown right? and so and just you- like all good psychic connoisseurs John knew exactly who to go to for this episode, and thankfully, he led us to... Her name is Janet. Janet. I first met her in the summer of 2017 in July. Our friend was like, hey, John, I want to go to see a psychic. I talked to my coworker. She said, hey, I heard of this psychic in the West Village that I grew up going to at this um, restaurant. And so we went in July. And that's when I met her. And I knew... So they had their reading... And then I had my reading. And mm-hmm. when I was having the reading, I knew it was different from all the other ones. How so? What was the, what was different about it? The main thing, you know, I've had psychics before where they've said things that have been really profound, you know, I've, and I've cried mm-hmm. or have like come true, quote unquote, in ways that I couldn't imagine. But I always felt like it's a little bit like they're trying to take advantage of me, mm-hmm. not like kind of maybe spiritually or like they were trying to get me to come back or they're just straight up trying to sell me something totally and i was which like if they find like a point of or like a therapist can do this yeah dentists can do it if they're like sees that's something that's I kind of a cavity but with contacts I mean, let me tell you <laughs> it's a business it's everything's a business everyone wants to make money yeah. and so can psychics yeah but so you felt like with janet she wasn't trying to sell right. you anything and and um and moreover she was i could feel that the messages she was saying were empowering me, whereas other messages might have felt like I was the victim of circumstance. Mm -hmm. And a lot of psychics do make you feel like the victim of circumstance, so you come back to them, because they're like your your only remedy. Uh And that's how people who are really susceptible to this kind of stuff get trapped. But with Janet, I felt so empowered. Uh And she's like, yeah, I I empower my clients. Information is just information. It's what you do with it. Yeah. Yeah affects your future and exactly (laughs) all right great i'm excited for janet are you excited to see her i am always excited to see her she is she doesn't even know it but she's a gay icon just tell us like give us a little bit of background on janet okay well i'm here in my capacity as a psychic right Mm -hmm. okay so people tend to ask me gee how especially when they've had a reason reading, you know, oh my goodness, how long have you been doing this? Mm -hmm. And what comes to my mind is, well, I was five when it was clear that I was really psychic. And the incident that always pops up into my mind first. Now, when I was five, my mother was 25. She had me when she was a 20 year old girl. Mm -hmm. And I was the first child, the oldest. And at this point, we were living in Cleveland, Ohio, and there were lovely big old Victorian houses on a city street, and somebody new moved in, and my mom said, I want to take a pie to these new neighbors, couple of doors down, to the new lady, couple of doors down. I don't have a babysitter for you, so just keep quiet. I'm taking you with me. So... I'm thrilled. I had never been included in an adult conversation that wasn't family reunion and relatives. Wow, Mm -hmm. I'm getting to be respected and okay, (laughs) I can do this. So mom and I, we surprised this lady. 
and she seats us on the sofa and the windows to the sidewalk in the street are behind our heads and we're looking into her beautiful old Victorian house. She was pretty well unpacked. She'd probably been there a week from the looks of the place. And she runs off to the kitchen to go get us something to drink. Mom and I are sitting there and we're being patient and we're waiting and I'm looking into this lady's house and I realize oh the man who used to live here was an old man and he died back there in that last bedroom on the left and he reminded me of my grandpa Hmm. oh then I asked myself, gee, did he live here alone? And I realized, no. His wife died first, about six years before that. And her Singer sewing machine is still in the basement. If we wanted to go looking for that Singer sewing machine, that would prove I'm right, okay, because it's still down there. And now I can feel him step out into the hall and he looks in our direction and he realizes the kid's getting me. He, that I'm picking up on his presence and what he's thinking. And so he turns to me and he says, tell these filthy squatters to get out of my house. Okay, and he's half joking, okay. So now the lady returns with glasses of water for mom and me. These two women haven't said more than hi. I'm Shirley, my mother's name, or other, the other lady's name is welcome to the neighborhood, okay? And this woman is leaning towards us to put water down on the cocktail table in front of us. And now I'm going to my mother, pulling at her shirt. Mom, mom, mom. The old man who used to live here, who died back there, says, tell these filthy squatters to get out of his house. Oh, my God. And this woman still had these two glasses of water in her hands as she was leaning over. And she does one of these, like, rumba dances to, like, whoa, 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 Yeah, she knows her house is haunted. She's having experiences. She knows. Okay. I figured we'd stay and talk about this. Okay. (laughs) And my mother, you know, does this version (laughs) of my collar, you know, and go, lifts me up. Janet, we're going now. And gets me out the door. Not another word is said. Get this kid out of this lady's house, this poor lady, what we've just done to her. Right. Okay. We get out to the, I have to tell you, I had the greatest mother in the world. We get out to the sidewalk. We take about three paces towards our house. And my mother looks down to, at me and she says, Janet, if you're smart enough to know these things, you're smart enough not to say them. Okay, I have to pause the episode of Beyond just for a hot second to talk about one of my favorite things, underwear. So I got a shipment of Tomboy X underwear a couple weeks ago, and I've been wearing them literally every day, and I smell horrible. (laughs) Kidding. I wash them. They're unbelievable. And I wanted to tell you guys about them because I truly think you will love them. And the thing is, it's not just underwear. They have so many things like bikinis, briefs, boxer briefs, trunks, and boy shorts, soft bras, Razorback bras in everyday basic colors, fun seasonal prints, and brilliant colors. And the best thing is they come in all sizes from extra small to 4X. So regardless of where you fall on the size or gender spectrum, Tomboy X offers amazing underwear that literally anybody can wear. So go to TomboyX.com slash beyond to check out the special bundles and pack pricing. And listen up. My celestial beings who are obsessed with all the stuff just like me. My Beyond listeners get an extra 15% off with the code BEYOND. So use the code BEYOND for an extra 15% off and be lifted in your spirit up to the heavens or whatever you believe in. And ditch whatever you're wearing right now to go buy a pair of Tomboy X underwear. 
And one more time, go to tomboyx.com slash beyond. That's T-O-M-B-O-Y-X dot com slash beyond. Yeah. Back to the show. And now that I know that she's been a psychic since she was five years old, I wanted to know what her process was for like doing a psychic reading. I do tarot cards. Great. So I'm going to get my ba- cards out of my bag. Great. Okay. Mike. Mm-hmm. The tarot deck is out on the table mm-hmm. and I'm shuffling the cards like they were rose petals face down. Oh, that's and beautiful. you do this. Mm-hmm. You take over. And, now I and take then over. you're yeah. going to collect 24, pick 24 one at a time, okay. face down in your palm, mm-hmm. latest pick on top, and hold them in your palm because that'll give some energy. Okay. Psychic energy to what you pick. So I'm, I'm going to continue shuffling yes. right now for a little bit. I'm shuffling. And we're going to be doing like Mike's this reading. Better. This is called a life reading. We're going to see what God and the spirits want you to know about your life. You're quite psychic yourself. Would you agree with this? Yes. Because what we're getting here is the other side wanting to talk to you. And goodness gracious... Goodness gracious is right. Remember when I told you that I was literally laying in bed and I couldn't sleep and I felt like there were spirits hovering above my bed trying to speak to me? Well, thank you, Janet. The the layout is a circular layout, 12 cards on the bottom layer, 12 cards go on top of that. You gave me two extra cards. That's fine. Oops. And you have a grandpa who's gone? Yes. More than one? Mm-hmm. Okay, this is representing the two grandpas. Just notifying us that um, he want he, they want to talk now. At least one of them. I'm looking across the table at what Grandpa wants you to know. Oh boy, I was really happily married. This is the Ten of Cups. Is the long happy marriage card. Strength card in reverse is, I just got sick. I just wasn't as strong, strong enough to stay. Mm. And um, so is that, is one, is, are they, is one, one grandfather, the other one is the other grandfather? I don't know which grandfather this is. It could be one or both. We're going to pull more cards after we can put these 26 cards back in the deck of 78. Okay. okay. We're just hitting some highlights here. So I just want to tell you, just cut in real quick of, um, so I did a session with a medium here and my grandfather came through and had some really like messages that made me very emotional. I okay. was like crying the whole time. Okay. And then my other grandfather did not come through, but I just moved this past weekend and my mom, <laughs> it's so crazy. My mom is a thing that she, a coworker told her that if she sees dimes, that's her, her father. So my grandfather, like, sending messages and this person was very spiritual and so in the middle of my move and of course there's coins when you move Mm -hmm. but we had just like put everything away and in the middle of our living room was a dime like in the middle of this room so i took a picture and sent it to my mom and um my grandfather also grew up in brooklyn and so i took a picture and sent it to my mom and i was like i think grandpa's here and she was like so happy and so it's just interesting that um very cool. So both grandpa- came through. Yeah, yeah, I think both grandpas are, are coming through because what we've really got is a card, the Three of Swords has a heart on it with three swords through it. And this is three of us want to talk to you. Mm. Okay. So the first big part about this reading was kind of all about my grandfather's. Interesting. Okay, what, which grand, we're going to do questions and answers now. Mm-hmm. Now, which grandfather passed first? First name? Um, Bob Robert. Okay, so Grandpa Bob, pick five cards for what Grandpa Bob wants you to know. Ooh. Yeah. All right, I know, folks, that you can't see these cards, but we're starting right out with the Ten of Swords, which is a body on the ground with ten These swords are bad in its back. Cards, Janet. Yeah. Okay, and now we got the death card here. We've got this was not his plan, and he left his poor wife behind. 
and he was a hard worker and pick five more this is background this was real grief when he passed pick five more how old was he when he passed the late 60s i would say okay early 70s well he felt young he had cancer melanoma he really did not mean to leave his wife behind like that oh. So he's really talking to her through you. So mm. thank you so much for the... Uh, is there anything mm. you can do for him, pick five, for the opportunity to tell Grandma he loves her? Okay, we got some old school thinking here. <laughs> What's the... Oh, boy. Janet's laughing. What does my grandfather say that I should do for my grandmother? No, it's not for your grandmother. We oh. asked what you could do for him, and he's basically saying, change and get married. Thanks, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Grant, you know what? He, that is his sense of humor. That is, it, it, it's a joke. Uh, it's honestly exactly what he would say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Change and get okay. married. Okay, Grandpa Bob, now let's be sincere. Work at it. Okay. Pick five. So this is the other Grandpa? No, we're doing Grandpa Bob again. We're giving him a, a, a chance for no jokes. Is there anything you can do for him on a no-joking level? Grandpa. He's laughing. It was a good joke. Okay. I love that his sarcasm came through. Okay. Um, Lols. <laughs> Grandpa continues to come through and is coming through as a sarcastic fuck. Can you believe that my grandfather is not only like coming through in all of these sessions with Asa in my past life regression at the show here, but he's like being a jokester to me that's so wild because janet could have read these cards in a different way of like he's really mad or he actually wants this but she's saying that he's joking so i find it interesting that my grandfather is continuing to come through but as his personality which is who he is he was the kind of guy who would joke about everything no matter how serious it was and if you think i'm maybe reading into this too much, listen to a clip from episode one where Asa literally calls out that grandpa is a sarcastic motherfucker. He is funny. <laughs> he was, was a And so the other side of all of this, uh -huh. he's, you know, so, you know, because people are listening and I just want to be clear that I paint the right, a fuller picture. He had a great sense of humor. And I think people who weren't his family and outside people, like he could be the mayor, like people would love him. Oh. He had a great way about him. And in some ways he gave the best of himself to people that didn't know him. No, I'm dead. <laughs> so he keeps joking. Is that what's happening? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's having a great time. He's laughing his head off. Okay, let's do the other grandpa. Okay. The other Bye, grandpa. grandpa. I love you. <laughs> the other grandpa is, what was his first name? Um, Arthur. Bob can do the floor show. Mm -hmm. He just wanted to do bits, Bob. He just, Bob just did bits. And honestly, that's so that's true. That's how it came off, yeah. too. Yeah, the, okay. The so format this is... of five cards even worked uh -huh. for him. Okay, Grandpa Arthur. What does Grandpa Arthur want you to know? Okay, so now that you're all well acquainted with my sarcastic grandfather, Bob, um, I want to give you a little context for my other grandpa, my mom's father, because he's about to come through. I called him Tupop because I, as a kid, we had Pop, which was Grandpa Kelton. And two pop, which is Grandpa Sullivan. And Grandpa Sullivan was like the nicest, sweetest, Catholicest man. <laughs> and he's just the kind of guy who is never sarcastic. I don't think he knows what sarcasm is because he looks at you in the eye and he just is super genuine and sweet with you. Like, I can't tell you anything other than like, he's the sweetest man. So what you're about to hear to me like really represents that. Wheel of Fortune is the great good luck card. And a pretty good show on TV. What's that? Oh, the Wheel of Fortune? Oh, how funny. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a card in the tarot deck and it yes, represents... Yes, yes. Great good luck. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the card next to it is marriage. Mm. So grandpa is saying, I love my wife. That was the luckiest thing that ever happened to me. Oh, that's sweet and very much like him. And this is the grandpa card. And he didn't even deserve her. Oh, that is. And he did the best he could, but he didn't become a rich man. This is, yeah, Bob can do the floor show. Uh -huh. Arthur's. That is 
a gentleman so, deep and serious. That is so true. That is exact. He's that's who he is. Yep. Yeah. I think we better pick five for what he wants his wife to know. What's grandma's first name? Virginia. Okay. <laughs> that's so funny. It's even like his temperament is like what you just did. One, two, three, four, five. He was really sorry that he passed. She's the one who's got the great longevity. Oh, yeah. She's and good health. How old is she now? Late 80s. Okay. And they had a son who's being characterized as Knight of Swords in Reverse, which was, he was a, a bit of a handful for them to understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. He blamed himself. He saw himself in the boy. Mm. And they had a beautiful, happy home, and she was a wonderful mother. This is what he's saying here. Mm -hmm. Is there, What does he want his daughter, your mom, to know? Pick five. Mm, that's a good question. And what was mom's first name? Kathleen. Kathy with a K. <laughs> well, as far as he's concerned, he was too hard on her, too. Mm. And he thought that... Uh, he didn't help her have enough opportunities. And he made her work too hard on domestic type stuff. And please forgive him. Oh, she's going to cry when she hears this. This is really, you know, he didn't really get, he was busy being a dad, trying to keep a thousand things together. He didn't really get how special she was. Mm-hmm. She's definitely going to be emotional right now. Let's throw these back and pick five for is there anything you can do for Grandpa? All right, Grandpa. Grandpa Sullivan, is there anything that I can do for you? So before I could hear what my grandpa wants me to do, Janet cut in with something a little spooky and very interesting. Well, while you were picking those cards, I was going, we'll get to you. Okay, so let's do the, I mean, we're doing a seance here. It's not always what we do, but we're doing it today. <laughs> Wait, um, what, Janet? That empty chair I was referring to before about don't bother vacuuming the cushions. Uh -huh. Okay, that's occupied by a darling lady who lived here. And this chair is occupied by a gentleman in spirit who have joined us who are enjoying you boys tremendously all the time wait so <laughs> wait i love this so got it so in the studio in this forever dog studio there's like you got company we have company there's so there's a a, a woman there's a i think she's connected to the house not to you boys and your family okay okay and a gentleman here i'm sure that one and actually, they've adopted you. You too. They love you. They think you're doing wonderful work. Huh. And they lived in the house. And now it seems like they're trying to communicate through the cards as well. Absolutely. You can definitely say no, for sure. Is mm -hmm. it possible that that is my grandfather? Let's ask. All right. Let's see if this ghost sitting on the chair in the room is actually my grandpa Bob. So, is the gentleman your grandpa? Okay. Pick one card, put it in your palm, then hand it to me. Okay. Or, is a spirit connected to the house? Pick one card, put it in your palm. And let's see. I don't think it's your grandpa. Okay. This card is, that's too much work. Okay, this card is, oh, I'm having a wonderful time. So okay. this is, he's in, this one is connected to the house and he's enjoying being part of the party. All right. So we know that the ghost is not actually my grandpa, Bob. But we also know that this guy sitting in the studio loves the pod. And you know what? We love that he loves the pod. So thank you, Leslie. <laughs> So in the future, when you hear me say Leslie, you know I'm talking about the ghost sitting in the Forever Dog studio who loves Beyond. Okay, we love Janet. We love John. You know, We love our two entities in the room. And John has something else to say. Oh, well, I mean, 
you know, this maybe this is anticlimactic now, but I just wanted to end on saying that today, um, one of Janet's predictions for me came true. Which was? I got a job offer today. <gasps> wow, here we are, the end of the app. And listen up, because I have thoughts. So, first off, we love Janet. She's a psychic, but maybe more so, a gay icon. She's the witchy mother to us all and gave me a tarot card reading that was really clarifying. But at the time, during the reading, I was kind of like, oh, this is more of my grandpa. But now, with a couple months in between and some weird spooky supernatural things that have happened since starting work on this podcast, like, I don't know, my lights flickering in the bathroom, my phone lighting up all night, And maybe spirits above my bed keeping me awake? Going back and hearing this episode, I think this reading was my grandfather clarifying that he's not only with me, but he's one of my spirit guides. Now, a spirit guide is something we'll probably talk a lot about moving forward, and it came up last week during Past Lives. And if you Google spirit guides, you might see a picture of, like, light shining through tall trees or... Whoopi Goldberg and Sister Act, but a spirit guide to me is some outside energy, maybe a dead relative, maybe a guardian angel, maybe a grandmother who lives in a weeping willow tree if you're Pocahontas, but basically a guiding force in your life that helps you and guides you and makes sure that you stay on track and don't do meth. And my grandfather is one of mine. Further clarification of this came during the launch show in September when Asa, you know, literally the magical being who's a medium and was in the show with me, he on stage just said something and you're going to hear it now. And your wow. grandfather came through. I mean, he was, he, I mean, he was loud and proud. He, yeah. he really, he was like, I got to talk. I'm here. He, he's been with me tonight before I came here. It was like, he was? I was, yeah, I was feeling really nervous. And, uh, and there were a couple of people that came. One is funny. It's a sister of a friend of mine who's here, but the other one was your grandfather. And, mm. uh, and it was, it was really cool. And finally, I wanted to call Andrew. You know, he's a bit of a skeptic. Kind, sometimes not kind. I wanted to hear what he thought of my theory about my grandfather. I mean, maybe. I just feel like, didn't your grandpa, like, squeeze you from behind and, like, flush the toilet? Mm -hmm. It seems like flickering the lights is not... It's not, it's not very advanced. So you think the flickering lights is too basic for grandpa? I mean, it's one of those things, like, if somebody said to me, you're going to start noticing um, spiders a lot. What? I could probably make it a point to notice spiders, and otherwise I would have maybe ignored them. So you think when you bring something up, you notice it more? Yeah, you like want to do, but you know, it's, you know, what came first, chicken or the egg? Like, is, are you noticing it and you're like bringing stuff toward you, the law of attraction, or is it just coincidence and you just, you know, have a a sharper mind about it? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because the thing, Mike, that you do is that you connect very flimsy dots. You're like, oh, Asa said I would start seeing flickering. And then, like, small things happen, and that, like, must be the thing, and that must be the thing. You never have a sense of, like, oh, I wonder if that's it. And let's be, like, let's see if it intensifies. You're just like, yes, that's 100% it. Grandpa's floating above our bed. Definitely. (laughs) So, maybe me grasping. But you can't deny that my grandfather's showing up so strongly in episode one being at the launch show, being one of my spirit guides during my past life regression years ago, and being the first and literally loudest thing that came out during this tarot card reading with Janet makes him probably one of my spirit guides. Either way, my grandfather would probably make fun of me for even acknowledging or saying the phrase spirit guide. So I get a little joy out of thinking that my grandfather is laughing right now. That's like cool to me. And honestly, Thank God I got this clarification, because on next week's episode, Strap the F in, we're going to Cure Thrift Shop in the East Village, 
where we all needed to call upon our spirit guides to help us dispel a legit dark force from a pair of Brooks Brothers pants that I tried on by mistake. Oh my God. Grandpa, do not fuck this up for me. I need you because this gets really spooky. So leave your fucking jokes in the spirit world because I do not need bad ends seeping into my pale ginger legs. And honestly, guys, I, I am not embellishing. Just like when I do an impression of my mom before people meet her, I'm not embellishing when I tell you that next week's episode will blow your fucking mind. But in the meantime, please rate and like this podcast. Literally, tell me what you think. Give us five stars or give us four. That's like also fine. But do something. Because, Bish, isn't this stuff... Forever Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter and Instagram at Forever Dog Team 